so Netanyahu <laughs> is saying that even if there is a deal to release uh, hostages from Hamas, he is still going to invade Rafah. So why would uh, Hamas release the hostages if that still means the Israeli government <laughs> is going to invade when part of the hostage release deals that Hamas wants is the end of the invasion of Rafa as well as a ceasefire. Uh, this just goes to show that the hostages isn't the reason why uh, Bibi Netanyahu is doing what he's doing because uh, the invasion of Rafa could mean the death of the hostages if the, uh, they are killed in airstrikes by the Israeli government or potentially shot dead by the IDF. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken now in Israel as part of the latest diplomatic push for a ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas. Blinken met earlier today with Jordanian King Abdullah and the State Department says he once again emphasized that Hamas should accept the latest proposal on the table. Complicating Blinken's efforts, though, are new comments from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who said, who said today that the Israeli military will go into Rafah with or without a deal on hostages. NBC News international correspondent Raf Sanchez has more now from Tel Aviv. Secretary Blinken today crisscrossing the Middle East, trying to secure an agreement that would pause the fighting in Gaza and bring the hostages home. His day started in Saudi Arabia. From there, he went to Jordan and on here to Israel. Now, this is a delicate diplomatic task, and it was made more complicated today by Israeli threats to move ahead with an offensive on the city of Rafa with or without a hostage deal. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying Israel has no choice but to go into that city because Hamas's remaining battalions are hiding there. Secretary Blinken speaking in Jordan earlier says the United States opposes any Israeli attack without a credible plan to get those million plus Palestinian civilians out of harm's way. But he did also there's there's never going to, going to be a plan to get the civilians out of harm's way because Bibi Netanyahu and many of his prime ministers don't care about innocent Palestinians because they think they're all guilty, that every single Palestinian is a terrorist, even babies. So say that Israel has shown flexibility in these negotiations to try to get a deal and that right now the ball is in Hamas's court, that there could be an immediate ceasefire if Hamas would agree to the offer on the table. That offer called... No, there wouldn't be a ceasefire because Bibi has already said he's going to invade Rafa even if the hostage is released. So saying that there's going to be a ceasefire if Hamas releases the hostages is a lie. I mean, this could be potentially a threat for the hostages because if Hamas knows that uh, Israel is still going to invade no matter what happens, they could just off the hostages and not care about them anymore. Calls for Hamas to release 33 hostages, that is women, children, the elderly, people with severe medical conditions, in return Israel would agree to a ceasefire of around 40 days and the release of thousands of Palestinian prisoners, potentially. Now, Hamas says its leaders are studying that proposal. Their mediators were in Cairo yesterday. It can sometimes take a few days for Hamas as an organization to respond because it needs to get messages to its ultimate leader, Yahya Sinwar, who is in Gaza, believed to be in the tunnels underneath of Rafa right now. It can take a couple of days to get messages to him, to get messages back. But there are many, many families, both in Israel and in Gaza, who are hoping that diplomacy will work and that this ceasefire agreement will come into effect. Back to you. It doesn't really seem like it if uh, the Israeli government is still going to invade 